I'm Florence Choate. I am the director of the Council on Aging. You are seeing me in my office. Mm -hmm. All right, welcome to the Senior Center. Mm -hmm. This is a building that has stood the, the uh, stood through uh, many, many storms, many, many things, many, many economic downfalls and upfalls. And it is, it was originally the for the, the Brook Street School. It was a two-room schoolhouse and it was built in 1834. So it has probably one of the oldest significance in terms of being built in the town of Situate. Um, when uh, they, they, the population grew to the point where they could no longer use this building, the first Jenkins School was built. So the children left and they decided what well, they were going to do with this building was make it a fire barn, which wasn't really easy because they had to blow out the front windows so there could be large doors. They had to construct a, a tower because the tower was, they used rubber hoses, and one of the things they did after a fire was they put the hoses up on the tower to dry. So that's why the tower is standing there. On top of that tower was a bell. I have no idea. I think the bell is now at the main fire station because it, it, it's historic. Uh, that's gone. Um, it once had a pole, which my staff is very sad it doesn't still have. <laughs> but then it became a number of different things. It was used as a car dealership, if you can imagine. And then it was used as a social service building, and they had um, they did some social service work here. It was a it was a private nonprofit. Um, uh, I'm not sure what the name was, but they did rent the building from the town, and they did counseling, and they did some um, some uh, things for seniors who were having a problem. Then it lay dormant, and so in 1983. The seniors who were here had only an office space uh, from Jack Conway, through the generosity of Jack Conway. And it was very small, not too much bigger than this, maybe double this space, and they couldn't do much in it. So Mrs. McGowan, Catherine McGowan, decided that this is a building that they could use. And you have to remember, in 1983, senior centers were just drop-in centers. They had dinners, they had bingo, they had car games, they had tea, but they didn't do any of the work the senior centers have come to do today. So they all got together, and they petitioned the town, and they fought for this building. And they got it. And every one of them came and got volunteers, they got people who donated uh, two by fours and four by fours and whatever they could get and descended upon this building and doing it over as best they could. So this really is the home of the seniors. It really is the home of the seniors. It's been a wonderful building 
and I, I, I love this building, although it does not meet our needs. It is too small. Uh, now we do so much more. We have grown, senior centers have grown. We don't even do bingo here. Believe it or not, there's no bingo. And, but we do other things. As you see, there's a group out there that is in, right now is doing Matter of Balance, which is a national program to prevent seniors from falling. That's so important because one third of every senior, uh, of the senior population is in the hospital each year with, because of a fall. It costs us just in this town, I mean not in this town, in this state, $16 billion a year in hospital bills. And not only that, when a senior falls, they could be 85, they could be 86, they could have osteoporosis. When they fall, the fall could be catastrophic. It could be a broken hip, it could be a broken knee, and it could be something that re reads the end of their lives because they just, many of them will not recover from that. They, they won't. They will just end up in, in a nursing home, which they do the best they can for the seniors. They do a good job. But there aren't a lot of options open. And so that's why senior centers, and especially this one, is devoted to the health and well-being of our seniors. We now have 5,500 seniors, and probably more than that. That was an April number. We expect to have over 7,000 in five years. The population for seniors all over the country are, is going to be growing right up to the year two, 20, uh, 2050. You are going to see more seniors in this town than you will see young people, just because there's only so much land, so many houses, and, and every day we end up with five or six more seniors. So the, it keeps growing, but the resources don't. And what we need is to be able to do our work, and especially our social work. Uh, when, when not just the seniors benefit from the, I, the fact that we're here, but if you have a mother or a father who has Alzheimer's and you're looking for resources, if you, you have a mother or a father who you have to put in a nursing home, you know, they come here. They come here to talk to our staff, to talk to our outreach workers, to see, you know, how they go about this because many of them have to spend down their money before they can start getting mass health. So there are many, 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 many journeys that, that have to take place before they're settled. And fortunately for us, our staff is well trained. We're trained on insurance, we're trained on uh, seniors who are, having, um, uh, who, who are having problems with Alzheimer's and dementia, seniors who are living home alone, seniors who continue driving even though they're 94 years old, and that's true. I had a 94-year-old senior who used to mow her lawn on a tractor. <laughs> so we have a 101-year-old senior that comes in every Monday and plays bridge, and she is as sharp as a tack. Mm -hmm. So uh, they come in all ages, all sizes, all conditions. We are seeing many, many more older seniors. People are living longer. Seniors are living longer. Seniors are not the seniors of yesterday. On my nightstand, I have a picture of my grandmother with me. And I started to calculate one day how old my grandmother was when that picture was taken. I was six. She was 63 years old. She had the little hat with the feather. She had the little pocketbook with the gloves, a coat you know, perfectly groomed, and her, her, um, her shoes were tied. They, you never would see a woman in those days, at the, a senior, with um, dungarees on. I had a woman yesterday came in, I will tell you, she looked really good. She had jeans, she had a jean jacket, she had a great sweater, she had a wonderful haircut, and I'm telling you, she was, she was 86 years old, and she was just great, just great, and thank, thank the Lord, healthy. And that's what we want to preserve. We want to preserve seniors' 
health and their well-being and their mental abilities and that's what we should be doing and we should be taking care of our seniors because they took care of us you know all of these seniors many of these seniors have been in this town 40 and 50 years they have put three or four generations of kids through school they have also built schools and voted for them they've kept up their homes and when you consider that many of them, when they bought their home 40 years ago, it was $18,000. They don't have the incomes now to pay the taxes on a on $700,000 home or because they're, they're uh, property rich and cash poor, and many of our seniors are in that situation. So, you know, we have to start looking to the future. We have to have young people who step forward and say, it's time. We do different programs, some we sustain for a long time, like the MAPS program that we're doing right now that has 28 seniors. It's really interesting because it starts with the first MAP that was there, when was done when Situate was incorporated. And it moves on right up until the current time. So you see the growth, you see the different patents, you see actually some shrinkage in other places, some growth in other places, different bodies of water that no longer exist, the way the ocean comes out, where it comes out. It's a fascinating, fascinating course. We are so lucky to have them. We have 28 seniors taking that course. We have, sometimes they're there three hours sitting and, and they don't complain because it is so interesting. And Bob Jackson is the gentleman that does it. Uh, in January, there's going to be a cultural um, history of, of Situate and he's going to also do another uh, MAPS course because that is um, that we have such a large waiting list for that. He's going to do a second one in January. And, and we do Italian in the spring and the summer. You know, any, anything that we can do that is, you know, enriching, we try to do. We're limited by space. I mean, we do as many exercises as we can in, at the Pier 44, and we certainly do forums over there. We had a forum uh, last week, this past week, for um, now it's a time, very busy time in, in, for Situate Seniors, be, uh, Situate Senior Center, because we are now um, doing uh, both fuel assistance for the whole town, and we're also doing um, prescription D changes, from, and they can only do that between October 1st and December 20, I think December 27th. So they come in here, we have a shine uh, uh, gentleman who does the work. We had a forum over there because he is so out straight with, with and he's wonderful. He is, Norman Tetrault is one of the smartest people I've ever met. He is so generous with his time. He does work for the seniors at his home, sends out the paperwork to them, takes calls at his home. I mean, he's just, he's just an angel. He really is. And we're, you know, it's, it's, he's, we found gold when we found Norman. So he comes in, we had a forum for those people who couldn't get, couldn't get uh, the appointments. And because he also does Weymouth. So when he went to the forum, there were two ladies that were so befuddled and so anxious and so upset because they needed somebody to be with them. And so he came back and he said, put me on the board for this and this because I, I, I want to be able to see these, these ladies. And that's Norman. And that's the, that's, that's the focus of this agency. We serve the seniors. The seniors are the important component. This is what we're here for, and this is what we do. And, you know, if we were away, if we went away, if the senior center, even the part of our social services, went away because we're right now operating with no privacy for bereavement groups, for Alzheimer's groups, for, um, for 
any, anything larger than five people. And we can at least get five people in one of our, in Jenny's office or my office. But we can't get 10. We can't offer a bereavement group. They're so hard to come by now, they're starting to charge. And that's a, you shouldn't have to worry about that. At the same time, you, you're, you're grieving your husband or your wife. Um, but we can't offer it. We don't have the space. We don't have the privacy. I can't put them on display. And I won't. So, and, you know, some of our applications, because we're so crowded and we have so many people coming in, we have one of our outreach workers who work behind a door. And every time someone comes in, you know, the confidentiality, confidentiality is broken. And, you know, that goes on and on and on. And, you know, it's very hard for a senior who's never asked for anything, who has never asked for anything in their life, to come into a place and ask for help, ask for fuel assistance because they don't have the money to heat their house fully and they don't know what else to do. And then we find out when we're dealing with them that they're not eating. So then we'll do a SNAP application and we'll start looking for resources. Are you a veteran? Uh, or is your husband, was your husband a veteran? There are resources that, that people do not know about, that we know about. And okay, so maybe your husband has Alzheimer's, he's at home, you're trying to cope with him, you don't want to put him in a nursing home, but your, re your health is going down because most of the caregivers in the home with Alzheimer's and dementia are spouses. And most of them are seniors with health problems themselves. And they have 24-7, they are taking care of these people. We need to have an active day, I mean a, a social day program. And the thing that would be the best in the world in a new senior center is to be have the veteran services in there. You don't know how much we work with them. Before Dawn came in, we were doing almost all the senior veterans. And so now we work in conjunction. And it really, it, it really makes sense to have us in the same place. So these are things that are not, we're not looking for the Taj Mahal. We're not looking to be the best in the block. We're not looking for a beautiful edifice. We're looking for a workable building that we can do our work and that can grow for the seniors to, as they come through. And that's, I believe, the least we can do for the seniors. And when I hear about senior centers, it's, we need a senior center. I said, no, you need the ability to serve elders. That's the point. Centers, I've been in my share. Um, most people, when I ask them to raise a hand, do they view this as a home away from home? Virtually all, everybody raises their hand. So what you're building is in effect a home, but really what you're building is a place for opportunity. So when you go into some place, this happened just recently in a small town, and they said, oh, well, we have volunteer instructors, and people bring in their own laptops, or they bring in their tablets, or they bring in, and they do it work in the seniors, Wi-Fi, they take it home, it's already done. This is opportunity for seniors to do what? To stay in touch with their grandchildren, to go online, to check on their stocks, to do whatever it is. Those are, in my opinion, opportunities. And whatever you're going to do, please consider it in light of what you're able to do. It has nothing to do with age. I I've been in this business a long time. I have seen people in their 90s. You know, Eleanor Roosevelt said something really, I, I love quoting. She said, we become old only when we stay, stop making a contribution. It's a great quote. And I have seen kids who I think are, are quote, old. And I have seen people in their 90s who are never going to die based on that because they are still going. They really are. I mean, this is the kind of thing. So we pick age because we think it means decrepitude or something. It doesn't mean anything until you've been out on the floor with an 80-year-old Greek woman who's doing you know, belly dancing and saying, she's in shape, what the heck happened to me? You know, and, and, and those are the kinds of, those are the, the real 
those are real things that happen. So to me, the building is a means to an end. Everybody's going to age. Not everybody's going to need the police department, the fire department, the public health. But you're all going to age. God willing, you're all going to age. Okay. So I'm trying to think of this as a place of opportunity, and I, and I guess really that that's my my spiel more than anything is is when you're looking at the senior center and the things. The, the, the figures that, that you have seen. I'm not making a recommendation. I'm going to say, do you want to have something for the vets? Do you want to have supportive day? Yes. You know, I mean, those are real things because what does supportive day cost on average in Massachusetts? $35 a day. What does a day in a nursing home cost on average? Figures here? Anybody? $371. That's a bargain. <laughs> if you can get it for $400 a day, you're doing okay. That's what it costs. So you're thinking about what do we want to help me stay to take care of my spouse or for my child society. As the, I'm not trying to lecture, but you know we're not thinking about the fact that for the next 35 plus years we're looking at a population that's growing and is going to grow in need. The boomers yet don't have need because they're not even in their 70s. And in our business, under 70 is young by definition. Okay, routinely. That's what.